there's a, if, oh, Jesus. If there's a house, if there's a voice that'll, that'll activate you when I can't, whew, better find you that father, find you that house. But I'm just grateful for the two or three people who belong to this house, amen. But hear me right here. It's about kingdom. It's about kingdom. It's bigger than us. 1.7 million people in this city. It's about kingdom. Do y'all hear me right here? Do y'all hear me right here? So we're going to celebrate kingdom, right? We're going to celebrate kingdom. Can we give it up one more time for... Salute. Now, Mosaic Church, I love you guys. Um, I don't want to scare you. We have a participatory church here. So our preaching, my preaching is less like a dialogue and more like a conversation between me and them. So, you know, y'all feel free to participate, you know. Feel free to participate. I'm not going to guarantee that amens will speed me up. <laughs> but, you know, hey, whatever, you know. Whatever you feel like doing, no, re really, we want you guys to feel freedom in this house. The Bible says where the Spirit of the Lord is, there also is liberty. So we want you guys to kick off your shoes and get, get ready. We're going to have a good time today. God chases, we're going to have a good time today. Y'all don't believe me. Y'all not ready for church. The Bible says, I will enter into his gates with thanksgiving. I will enter into his courts with praise. I will say, this is the day that the Lord has made. Then what? I will rejoice for he has made me. Can, can people take just 30 seconds and rejoice because he's made you glad? In it? Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Just take about 30 more seconds because he has made you glad in him. Come on, 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 come on. Yeah, Lord. Turn your Bibles to Matthew chapter 11, Matthew chapter 11. Today, I, 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 I want to help you today, 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 today. I want to help you today. Look at somebody and say, I'm a priest. I'm a priest. I need you to hear this today. I need to speak this into your spirit. But I'm going to read from Matthew chapter 11, verse 1. Um, I don't know if we have, oh, look at y'all. Y'all so, y'all so. Y'all so good in here. Look at that. That's a, that look nice to you. <laughs> Matthew chapter 11. I'm going to start reading at verse 1. We'll pick up at verse 2, but I want to start reading at verse 1. When Jesus had finished giving instructions to his disciples, he departed from there to teach and preach in their cities. Now, when John the Baptist heard this while in prison, he heard the works of Christ, he sent a word by his disciples and said to him, who is him? Jesus, right? He says, are you the one or shall I look for another? Look at somebody and say, are you the one or shall I look for another? I've been looking for the one in here. I just want to know, is the one in here today? Are you the, are you the, you don't even know what you're saying. Amen to you. The crucifixion. Amen. Are you the one? Oh, are you the one? Or shall we look for another? Jesus answered and said to him, go, tell John what you hear and see. The blind receive sight, the lame walk, the lepers are cleansed, the deaf hear, the dead are raised to life, and the poor have had the gospel preached to him. And blessed is he who does not take offense to that. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we thank you, we love you, we give you glory and honor, Lord, help me, help them in Jesus' name, amen and amen. I need you to high-five three people and say, are you the one, or shall I look for another? Are you the one? Are you the one? Thank you again for being here today. Listen, 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 listen. I, I, I want to help you with this text because this is one of the most baffling texts that I've ever read in the Bible. 
One of the most baffling texts. I mean, it literally bothered me the first time I read this text. I had an issue with the first time I read this text because, because th- it, it, we've, we've read this text always with an incorrect understanding of John's position towards Jesus. Okay? Everybody who's ever taught this text or everybody who I ever heard taught this text taught it from an incorrect understanding. They, they taught it from a place of hindsight. Somebody say hindsight. You know what the best sight is? Hindsight. Everybody's right in hindsight. Everybody knew in hindsight. You know what? I, I knew, I knew, I knew. I knew she was going to do that. I knew the whole time. I knew all along. I get that a lot from, from, from uh, some of the parking lot prophets here. Pastor. Oh, I'll be nice. Mosaics here. I'm sorry. Uh, I, I, but I get that a lot from, you know, people in hindsight, they, they knew everything. In hindsight, it all makes sense. In hindsight, everybody can come to you when it's all over a stand and say, oh, I knew that was going to happen. And we get this sort of preached from the perspective of hindsight. Hindsight is John's faith was waning. John's faith was waning. He didn't know who Jesus was. He didn't recognize Jesus as the Messiah. He didn't really understand what Jesus was about to do. And so his faith was waning. And so he's coming to Jesus because his faith is failing. But I I, I disagree with the premise of that text. Because the premise of that text has to do with hindsight. It has to do with you knowing something because it happened, not before it happened. Does that make sense? Pastor, Pastor Dante, where are you going with this? I, I, I just want to help you right here because some people will come to you and tell you what they knew. After the fact. Tell you how you should have responded. What you should have done. Oh, girl, if that was me, I would have. Hindsight, hindsight, hindsight. But uh, John did not have the he, he he did not have the benefit of hindsight, and so and so we can't teach this text from a place where John we we can't teach the text from where we are, and we got to teach it from where John is. Does that make sense? So John is in prison. John is in prison, and and we know that this is the place where John would die. Literally, he knows he's not going to get out of prison. It's all over for him. His head's going to get chopped off. Yeah, y'all didn't read your Bible. <laughs> See, back, back then, it, it, you, you, you couldn't be a Christian and just post a little scripture every day. <laughs> little Facebook, little Instagram, four by five of how... God is so good, and then on the next post, you cut somebody out. Like, it has to be, hear me right here, it, 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 it was all or nothing. Somebody say all or nothing. You had to be all in or, 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 or all out. You couldn't be halfway in and halfway out. And I wonder if there's some Christians in this house that say, God, I'm all in. I'm all in. I'm a part of it. Whatever you need from me, whatever you ask for me, I'm all in. But we preach this text as if John doesn't know Jesus. John absolutely knows Jesus. Somebody say, John knows Jesus. John knows Jesus Jesus in three specific ways. The first way is in relation. Somebody say, relation. John is Jesus' actual cousin. He's his actual cousin. He went to the family reunions with him. The, The kickbacks. His mama made potato salad. Jesus' mama made the beans. They knew each other. <laughs> they knew each other. He knew him by relation. As a matter of fact, remember uh, that Jesus was uh, just incepted. Uh, 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 immaculately incepted. Amen. He was just incepted. And John was about six months in his, into his mother's pregnancy. And Elizabeth is six months pregnant. And Mary walks into the building. And John starts jumping around on the inside of Elizabeth. John starts jumping around. Listen, first of all, I want to say there needs to be somebody in your life that can make your baby leap. There needs to be somebody in your life that when you get in touch with them, 
all of a sudden something on the inside of you say, oh no, I'm about to do something. I'm about to change. Something is about to happen. I need some people in my life that make my baby leap. Look at somebody and say, are you the one? Or shall I look for another? So John knows Jesus. He knew Jesus in spirit before he ever met him as a man. But he knows Jesus as a man. He knows Jesus in relation. John and Jesus are cousins. He knows Jesus by affirmation. We talked about this before. God affirms. Man confirms. Okay? Okay? Are y'all with me today? If you come to me, I'm just going to confirm what God already said to you. Okay? Man, man confirms. God affirms. Does that make sense? So, so one day while John was baptizing Jesus, which was a regular occurrence, John baptized a lot of people. But when John was baptizing Jesus, the Bible says that God ripped open the sky, stepped down, put his face down through the clouds and said, this is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. All of a sudden, everything starts shaking. The ground starts shaking. And John's looking like, what just happened? Imagine we're doing baptisms here. We got everybody out on the stage, all everybody's, they got towels. We're doing the baptism, the worship team's playing, and all of a sudden something says, this is my beloved son in whom I... <laughs> Pastor Kev messed around and drowned somebody. Like, oh. <laughs> let him up, PK, let him up. That would be the craziest thing ever. And so John, John is recognizing this. He hears this. He participates in this. And he understands through affirmation who Jesus is. John knows Jesus through relation, through affirmation. He also knows it through declaration. He spoke it out of his own mouth. One day he sees Jesus walking by the river. Jesus is walking by the river. And John looks and says, but behold, the Lamb of God who cometh to take away the sins of of the world. So John knows Jesus through relation, through affirmation, and now even through declaration. Think about the times where you declared something in your life in one season and you were unsure about it in another season. Think about the times when you, I, I want you to get to this place. I was talking to Chauncey while he was driving me uh, this morning, and I was talking to him about uh, um, a season in my life where I, I, I was making <laughs> amount of money. And I was like, well, I'll make this, <laughs> but I want to make <laughs> And he kind of chuckled a little bit. I wasn't mad at him, but I, I noticed. He kind of chuckled a little bit because, because hear me right here, because what you pray for in one season could make you sad in another season. Are y'all with me today? What you ask God for in one season, the blessing, what it looked like the blessing of God, that $2 raise, it was, gonna, it was the blessing of God in one season. Now, now in another season, I don't make enough to deal with this. I don't, I don't make enough to, they don't pay me enough to. I'll bring it even closer to some of y'all. So, you know, the, the, the man that you pray for. No, nobody move, nobody get hurt. I'll make it uh, the, the man that you pray for, the husband that you pray for. You was fasting? Girl. You was reading everything, everything that Prashia Hilliard had to put out, everything that every, uh, every author had to put out. You was reading and writing, oh, you was praying and singing songs, saying, thank you, God. When, when my man come, I'm going to treat him, I'm going to do, I'm going to cook. <laughs> then after a while, you know, thrill is gone. Thrill is gone away. Where you at, JJ? No, I'm kidding. You get to that place. Oh, you get to that place with that woman. You chased her. You chased her. You called her every day. You called her when you knew she wasn't home. Just to see. <laughs> Just to see. You just left her. You called her on the phone to see if she was home yet. And, and, and now when you got her, you don't. Are you the one? 
Or shall I look? He's not doing anything you wouldn't do. John's not doing, he's just trying to make sure of what he believes God said about the promise that God gave him. I don't know about you, but sometimes I'll just do a checkup with God like, okay, I remember you had said that I was supposed to, and then I just want to make sure I'm doing everything that I'm supposed to do because you had said that I was the head and not the tail, that I was above and not beneath. I just wanted to make sure that we were still on the same track. And the truth is, John is saying, hey, are, are, we still, are we still going in the same direction? Are we still on the same track? Because what he thought that Jesus was going to be was a messianic king. A messianic king. He thought Jesus was going to be the Messiah. And they thought Jesus was going to come with a sword and a white horse and, and start a war and kill all the Romans. And every, they thought Jesus was going to slaughter everybody. And he was like, this man is turning water into wine at parties and stuff. <laughs> Player, I'm about to get my head cut off. You doing party tricks? Are you the one? Or should I look? I'm, I'm in this. And what I want to know here, and, I, and this is something I talk to men about all the time. If, if, if she's going to follow you, oh, Jesus. If she's going to be a part of what you say y'all future look like, I, she just want to know if you in it. Because she going to be in it. Does that make sense? All she want to know is that you committed to what you promised her in the first place. Are you the one? She just want to know that you committed to the same level that she's committed to. Does that make sense? Because, look, because she's saying, I'm about to die for this. I'm about to die for this. One of the things, I'm going to deal with leaders in church just for a second. Uh, again, Mosaic Church, just ignore me for a second. I got to deal with my church for I just got to deal with my church. It's okay. Just ignore me for a second. Uh, 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 you want to be the leader in a certain organization or you want to be the leader. And it doesn't just have to do with church. It, ha it, it could be in your job or whatever. You want to be the leader, but you, you want other people to... To work harder than you at the thing you are the leader at? John said, I'm going to die for it. Okay, if I give you my time, listen, there are high impact leaders sitting right here in the sanctuary. But they're not going to serve under you because you're lazy. Are you the one or shall I look for? You a leader in name only. Are you the one or shall I look for another? Don't ask me to come here on Saturday if you're not going to be here. Are you the one or shall I look for another? Look, I, I, I'll get real deep. Don't ask me to join your church. Don't ask me to tithe. Don't ask me to participate. If I can't see what's happening, if I can't see God is doing something, I need to know if you're the one or shall I look for another. Don't ask me to have buy-in to something you don't have buy-in to. That's what John the Baptist is saying, not me. See, I want you to understand something before I get to my first point. I want you to understand something. <laughs> I want you to understand something. You have to be in agreement with what God says about you. Oh, uh, I'm gonna say this over here now. This is, you have to be in agreement with what God says about you. John's not saying, I don't believe in you. He's not saying, I don't have faith. I don't believe that you're the Christ. He's just saying, do you believe in you? Because you are the rescuer, and I'm waiting on you to do something more than turn water into wine. I need to see something. Are you the one? Or shall I look for another? You have to be.
be in agreement with what God says about you. Understand something. Some of y'all have received words from God. You've received wisdom from God. You've received prophecy from God that you haven't agreed with. Because if I agree with it, I would start to walk it in. The... God tell me, God says, you're going to own a barber shop. Then I need to go to barber school. But if I'm not in agreement, then I'll just sit around and say, well, God said. Does that make sense? Agreement activates me. Agreement activates who I am. Are y'all with me today? Okay, so, so, so what John is saying is, I just need to know if you're the one. They expect John to be the, uh, Jesus to be the messianic prince, the messianic king, excuse me. So what, uh, what, what's the messianic king, Pastor Dante? Well, the messianic king, in the order of Melchizedek, is both a king and a priest. All right, I'm going to help you. He said they're both a king and a priest. Now, what's a priest? Well, I, I, most of y'all know what a king is, but a, a lot of y'all don't know what a priest is. A priest is somebody who has been set aside and identified. I, I'll read the definition so they can put it on the screen. A priest is someone who has been identified and trained to be in service to the tabernacle. Are y'all with me today? A priest is someone who has been identified and trained to be in service to the tabernacle. Now, Jesus is supposed to be the messianic king, but also the messianic priest in the order of Melchizedek. Melchizedek is the first priest. Are y'all with me today? He is the first priest to be both a king and a priest. See, you got to learn how to be a king and a priest. A king means I have authority in some places, but a priest means but I serve in other places. A king means that I'm strong in some places, but a priest means I'm yielding in other places. And you got to learn how to be both a king and a priest. That was the power of Melchizedek. This is the idea about Melchizedek. And this is why it was going to be important that Jesus be uh, uh, in the order of Melchizedek. Because he's both a king and a priest. I want you to understand something. Uh, I'm going to give you a couple of facts about priests. Y'all can write these down real quick. The, the first thing about priests you need to understand is as a priest, you are called to serve the people. I'll say that again. As a priest, you are called to serve People, not the building, people, not the pastor, people, not my, not my position, my, my title, my whatever it is, my religious, I don't know, didactic uh, sayings that, I, that I've been given. No, no, no. My job is to serve people. My whole, my entire job, the entire job of the priest is to serve people. How can you be a priest if you don't serve? How can you be a priest if you don't serve anybody, if you're not yielding to anybody, if you don't understand, if you can't have compassion for somebody, then you can't be a priest. But I, we've been called to be a priest just as Jesus is a priest. We've been called to be joint heirs with Jesus. But at first, it gotta, it's got to look like serving people. It's got to look like serving people. I got to say that one more time. Not for Mosaic Church, just for our church. It, it's got to look like serving people. <laughs> If you are a priest, number two, you are, you, 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 <laughs> you are under a priest. You can't be a priest outside of the priesthood. You got to be under a priest. Are y'all with me today? So if I'm a priest, I'm, I'm under a priest. I walk under a certain amount of authority. Uh, the centurion soldier looked at Jesus. He, he said, look, I, I'm a man in authority, but I'm also a man under authority. What you didn't realize is he was setting a biblical precedence that says you cannot be in authority without being under authority. I know a whole lot of people who think they're in authority, but if you're not under authority, you're not in authority. Nobody's going to submit to you until they know who you submitted to. If you got a bunch of kids who don't listen, talk to your mama. Y'all didn't get that. She'll tell you. Oh, girl, you was just like that. (laughs) 
Mama, don't say nothing. My, my mama, do, don't, don't say one word. Be quiet. I'll take you to lunch afterwards. Okay. If you're a priest, you stand under a priest. My problem a lot of times, eh, 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 eh. oh man, I'll be careful. Who are you under? Who do you serve? Who you can, before you start your church, your ministry, before you go, I launch out. Who did you serve? Because there's, t- uh, there needs to be testimony for who you sat under. There needs to be testimony for who you serve. Paul would spend all the, uh, all the 13 letters describing who he sat under. Why, why, why I sat under Gilgamesh and I sat under this person and that person. Because it matters who you sit under. Do y'all hear me today? Okay, number, two, number three, if you're a priest, oh, Jesus. If you're a priest, since I'm under authority and I'm in authority, if you're a priest, you have to be parented. I said, Dante, what's that look like? I, I'm a grown man. <laughs> I'm a grown man. I, I'm a grown man too, but I understand that there's some people who have more wisdom than I do. So I have to go back into the, I have to go back to the source. Listen, so you, you got to be born into the priest. Oh man, you got to be born into the priesthood. You got to be born. Who, who is your spiritual covering? Who's parenting you? Who can call you and say, hey, stop that? I'm going I'm to I'm get real practical. Man. I'm going to preach, though. I'm, I got about, can I have five minutes? Raise your hand if I can have five minutes. Five, 10, 15, 20, 25. That's all I need. Thank you. Thanks, everybody else. Save your five. Um, <laughs> <laughs> oh, that cracked me up today. Okay. <laughs> I almost forgot where I was. <laughs> Understand something. If, I, if I'm a priest, I have to be parented. I need somebody that can speak into my life. There's people here that, you know, you, you'll post something on social media. You know, just jump out there a little too far. XO <laughs> say, I called her. <laughs> Pastor Tabitha said, I, I called her. I asked her to take it down. You see, I said, huh. <laughs> I, I, I don't hardly have to do this. Okay, all right, all right. So she said, I called her. I told her to take it down. If you take it down, you're, you're a son or a daughter. If you don't take it down, because you've grown, you've grown and will know how to treat you. As an attender, as a participant, not as a son, because sons are parented, okay? They are parented. You don't know who's looking. You don't know what, how that could be taken. Oh, man. All right, all right, all right. Okay, I'm back to it. Okay, listen, in order to become a priest, you, you, you have to be parented. Ammunition without aim is dangerous. Some of y'all are active. Live ammunition. You need to be pointed. <laughs> or you're going to hurt somebody. I should have got an amen from some live ammunition just for that. You need to be pointed or you're going to do damage to somebody. Maybe even to yourself. Amen. A- amen. Ammunition without aim is dangerous to everyone involved. Okay. All right. Priests are also parents. What's that mean? That means if I was born into it, I should be birthing someone else into it. Does that make sense? I said this before. I'll say it again. I don't care what field you're in. I don't care who you are. You should have somebody mentoring you and you should be mentoring somebody. Who are you mentoring? Who are you teaching? Listen, I'll help you right here. A disciple will help you walk better. Knowing somebody watching. (laughs) The truth is they're watching anyway. Does that make sense? Okay, okay, okay. All right, I'm going to give you a a couple more of these and then I'm I'm, going to get out of here. Okay, a priest has to have pure hands and a clean heart. 
Lord have mercy, Jesus, help me right here. A priest has to have pure hands and a clean heart. That means I can't go tit for tat with everybody. I can't get back at you. Everything you said, I got to return something back. A priest doesn't have to do that. A priest can say, no, 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 uh, if God be for me, who could be against me? I'm going to pray for you and your family. I'm going to continue to pray for you and love on you because I'm a priest. Does that make sense? Okay, a, a, priest, a, a priest doesn't have a title. A priest has a position. Oh, Pastor Tab. <laughs> a priest has a position. What does that mean, Pastor Dante? It means if, if you've been positioned, then you can be repositioned. If you have a title, you that forever. So nobody can ask you to work in the kids' ministry. Because you got a title. You're not a sound man, you're a priest. You're not a cameraman, you're a priest. You're not a youth director, you're a priest. Do y'all understand that? And you have to walk in that. You have to walk in that understanding that I, I, I'm not what anybody says I am. I'm just standing in position because I'm a priest. Whatever God called me to be, whatever God called me to do, whatever you need, here I am. Send me, Lord. I am a priest. Look at somebody and say, I'm a priest. I'm a priest, so I can be moved. I can be repositioned. It, that means for a family, if God wants to move us in a different direction, then I, I, I'm a priest. I allow God to move our family in a different direction. One day I sat down with my wife. said, hey, our family is about to move in a different direction. She said, okay. You know what she was saying? I'm a priest. Wherever we need to go, however we need to do, whatever you feel like the shifting is and leading. Now, man, let me help you. I'd improve myself. I did that after 20 years. You want to do that after 20 months? I'm going to quit my job and we're going to start a, uh, uh, boy, you better keep that income coming in. <laughs> Prove yourself, priest. <laughs> so, <laughs> all right, are y'all with me today? So it's not about title. It's about position. Look at somebody and say, it's not about your title. It's about position. Where can you serve? How can you be available to serve? How can you be connected to the ministry? How can you be connected in our family? What, what does it look? It's not about title. It's about position. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to help the man again. It's not about title. It's about position. Me and my wife decided a long time ago that we weren't going to obey uh, family norms that we saw on TV. I like to cook. I'm decent at it too. Don't play with me. I know. All five mother sauces. Don't play with me. I know them all. <laughs> Some of y'all still heartbroken over that mother sauce. I'm sorry. I apologize. You can microwave with the best of them, girl. Don't worry about it. Um, All right, I'm sorry, come back. Listen, I'm trying to help you today. Okay, okay, but, but, but we decided that it was best for me to cook. Now, I could have been like, oh, well, you're supposed to cook because I'm the man. I bring home the bacon, you fry it. Well, that sounds stupid. Amen. Especially if I'm good at frying bacon. <laughs> I'm the best bacon fryer in the house. I'm going to fry the bacon. And then I'm going to position her to do something else. Does that make sense? If you understand that, you'll stop trying to write checks because you know you can't add. Give her the, <laughs> give her the checkbook. <laughs> All right. Can I, can I help y'all? Are y'all still with me today? All right. I, 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 this is my second time preaching today, so I'm... <laughs> I'm being silly. Okay. All right. So, so does that make sense? So priests get in position. Okay. This is, this is the last one. Maybe two. This is the last one. <laughs> priests can't be prideful. You got to be humble if you're a priest. You got to be humble. What do you need? How can I serve you? How can I curtsy you? Because I'm a priest. Because I'm a priest, I got to be humble. I got to be humble. And even to people who don't deserve my humility. Because I'm a priest. I'm not serving you. I'm serving God through you. 
Do y'all hear me today? I'm not serving you. I'm serving God through you. So as I serve you, this is what my service to God looks like. I am a priest. Okay, does that make sense? Okay, and the last one, I'm going to be, y'all going to go too far with this, but priests can't be petty. Petty does not mean smart remark. Petty means you pay attention to small stuff, stuff that doesn't matter at all. Stuff that's not an issue at all. Daddy, you come into the house and you're already mad about something that don't even matter. Mama, you come into the house, you're already angry about stuff that doesn't even matter. It doesn't even matter. It's too small for you. You're a priest. Get over it. Deal with it. You're a priest. There's two things I don't worry about. Things I can change because I can change them. Things I can't change because I can't change them. Okay? That makes sense? So, so Pastor Dante, all... Uh, uh, that all sounds good, but what does that have to do with me? Well, I need you to understand something. Because if I am a priest, then I can do something very significant. Okay? A priest can make a declaration in one space that shifts something in another space. A priest can say a thing. In fact, the reason Jesus was even born in Bethlehem is because a king said something in one space that shifted something and the whole world had to move. They, they had to go to where they were born to be counted and Jesus was born in that place because the whole world had to shift because a king or a priest can say something and shift the whole world. I need you to get this. A king or a priest can say something and shift everything. Why, why does that matter, Pastor Dante? There's a, there's a priest in Italy right now. There's a priest in Italy in a place called the Vatican. And if that priest says something, if that priest says something out of his mouth, the entire world of a billion people will shift to respond to what he said. Pastor Dante, why does that matter? Because you, if I'm a priest, I got to watch what I say. What I say matters. What I say matters. What does that mean, Pastor Dante? Well, uh, the word for say in the Bible is what? Lego. L-E-G-O. Everything I say is building something. Everything I say is building something. If I speak good, it's building something good. If I speak bad... Everything I say is building something. Look at, look at somebody and say, everything you say is building something. So you got to watch what you say. You got to watch what you say. Excuse me. You got to watch what you say about yourself. You got to start speaking what God said about you. You got to start saying, I'm the head and not the tail. I'm above and not beneath. I'm the lender and not the borrower. I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Oh, Lord, you need to learn some scriptures. I am fearfully and wonderfully made. When you look in the mirror, you need to start telling yourself what God said and believing that if you say it on this side, it's shifting something in the spirit. Whatever I say on this side is shifting in the spirit. Jesus they asked Jesus, how do you pray? He said, pray like this. We turn that into say this prayer. But he didn't say say this prayer. He said, pray like this. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is. So whatever I speak on earth has to look like what it is in... Oh, y'all not ready. Y'all not heaven. Whatever I say on earth has to look like what, it say, what, what heaven says about it. Okay? There's no cancer in heaven. There's no diabetes in heaven. There is no sadness in heaven. There is no crying in heaven. And you got to start speaking over your life. The sound that reverberates from heaven. Last point. So there, the word, the Greek word for sound is echo. Greek word for sound is echo. Now, this is a problem for me because we know echo to be a reverberation of a sound that's already been made. This might be too deep for y'all. So every time I make a sound, biblical sound, I'm making a sound that is a reverberation of a sound that's been made in 
Are y'all with me today? So when I make a sound, when I release a sound, I'm not the source of the sound. The source started in heaven. I am releasing a sound. Oh, hear me right here. I am releasing a sound that began in heaven. And all I'm doing is speaking it over my family, over my children, over my life, over my job. I will release a sound on earth as it is. Somebody say on earth as it is in heaven. Because I'm a priest, I have a right to release sound. Because I'm a priest, I have a right to release sound. And that sound will shift something. So, we talk about the seven last sayings. Jesus was on the cross. We walk through the seven last sayings and they're so beautiful. They're so amazing. And we, we talk about everything Jesus articulated at the end when he was about to die. But we missed something, Pastor Kevin. There's one more thing. So he says these seven last sayings, he's putting things in order. He's fixing things. And, and, and then he, the Bible says he does one more thing before the ceremony is over. Before everybody could go home, the Bible says that Jesus releases a sound. No, oh, hear me right here. Jesus released. Listen, the ceremony is not over. Oh, hear me right here. Until the sound is released. Uh, the ceremony is not over until the sound is released. And, 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 and when the sound is released, you have victory. When the sound is released, you don't have to cry no more. You don't have to worry about it no more. Everything that you were sweating, everything that you were worried about, everything that you were concerned about is gone now. All you have to do is is release the same sound that Jesus released. And you can shift something at your house. Oh, Jesus. You can shift something at your job. You can shift something in your family. You don't have to be the same way your family was. You can release a sound because you are a priest. Say this, because I am a priest, I can release a sound that will shift atmospheres. Now I want you to take 30 seconds and just stand up on your feet and release a sound that will shift. Come on, come on, come on. Come on, come on, come on. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Something's shifting. Something's shifting. Something's moving. Come on, something's moving. Something's moving, come on. Something's moving. I can release a sound. I can release a sound that will shift the atmosphere. I can release a sound that'll shift my family. Come on, come on, I need to hear you in here. I can release a sound. I can release a sound that'll shift atmospheres. But it has to do Hear me right here. That's on the inside of you. It has to do with the sound that's on the inside of you. You, you, you have to pray over your children. Pray over your job. Pray over your house. Pray over your spouse. Pray over your... Stop complaining about things that you can pray about. Oh, man. Stop complaining about things that you can pray about. So I want to take the last... This, this next three minutes, and can we just, with all hands lifted, everybody in here, can we just start opening our mouth and release a sound? Come on, a sound that'll just shift something back. It may, it may just sound like amen, amen, hallelujah, hallelujah. If some of you guys speak in a heavenly language, come on, Steve. If some of you guys speak in a heavenly language, release that heavenly language. Come on, come on, come on, come on. For just a few more minutes. I believe something's shifting at your house. I believe something's shifting in your atmosphere. I believe something's shifting. I believe something's shifting. Come on, come on, come on, come on. You got to believe it in faith. Because you are a priest. Because you are a priest, something's shifting at home. Because you are a priest, something's shifting. Come on, come on. But I, I, I want you to take a few seconds and just believe it for yourself that something's shifting. Something's moving, come on. Something's changing, come on, come on. Come on, for about two more minutes, can we just open our mouth? Come on and believe, begin to say what you know God is shifting in your life. Come on, some of y'all need a new season 
It's shifting right now. Some of y'all need a new season. It's shifting right now. Some of y'all need a new atmosphere at your home. It's shifting right now. Come on, you are a priest. You can say something here that'll shift something. Come on, come on, God chaser. You are a priest. You can say something here that'll shift something there. Come on, come on. I'm a priest. I can say something here that'll shift something there. That'll shift something at my house. That'll shift something at my job. That'll shift something in my relationship. Come on, come on. For about 30 more seconds, I want you to lift your voice. I want you to lift your voice for about 30 more seconds and just release a sound. It's shifting, it's shifting, it's shifting, it's shifting, it's shifting, it's shifting. Come on, it's shifting, it's shifting, it's shifting, it's shifting, it's shifting, it's shifting. It's shifting in here, come on, come on. Release it, release it, release it. Come on, 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 come on. Spirit come down. Break our walls down. And release the sound of heaven. Come on. Break our walls down. Release the sound of Spirit, Spirit. Break our walls. Release the Come on, with one more loud shout, just release the sound. Hallelujah. With every head bowed and every eye closed, I believe some priests shifted today. I believe you shifted an atmosphere. I believe you shifted you shifted something at your job. I believe you shifted something financially. And I'm praying today that you don't go back the same way you came. When you get home, know that something is shifted at your home. When you get home, know that something is shifted. In your, even when you get in your car, you got to know something shifted. And listen, today, if you don't know Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior, I want you to do me a favor. I want you to repeat this prayer after me. Just say, Lord Jesus, please forgive me for all my sins. Come into my heart. Change my heart. Come into my life. Change my life. Father, today I accept you as my Lord and Savior. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Listen, if you said that prayer for the first time or you believed it for the first time, I want you to take one more step of faith. I'm going to ask you on the count of three to raise your hand as high as you can, just declaring that you have accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior. One, it doesn't matter how you got here. It doesn't matter who invited you. I believe today everything shifted in your life. Two, don't worry about who's next to you, what they think about it. Today you made a decision to come to Jesus. Three, if that's you, raise your hand as high as you can raise it. Somebody's coming to pray with you. Take a step of faith. Raise your hand. Take a step of faith. Raise your hand. And the saints of God are rejoicing all over this building. The saints of God are rejoicing all over this building.
the seats. I don't know if you recognize what happened this afternoon, but if you weren't informed, you're now informed that you have permission to release a sound that will reverberate from earth to heaven. And so let me help you a little bit. In the book of Isaiah, that was what Jesus reverberated in the tabernacle because it was already in the word. So there was an echo that was reverberated, right? Okay, so listen, let me help y'all. Let me help y'all because some of y'all, it's, it's still like snow, but it's going to melt, I promise. Listen, so in the Bible, in Malachi, it talks about bringing all your tithes, right? It talk, I wrote it down so I can make sure. You bring all your tithes into the storehouse, right? So some people say, well, you know what? That's in the Old Testament. We don't have that and we have the New Testament. Well, let me help you because in Philippians, which is in the New Testament, it talks about that my God shall supply all my needs. And how can my supply be given to me if it's not already in the storehouse, which comes from me? Because it's not even my money. I'm actually giving back to the source my resource. Okay, yeah, we still gonna work with it. So then we go further and we go down to Corinthians where it says, for God loves a cheerful giver. Now, if you're thinking about the Old Testament, you say, well, I, that's mine. I just, that's the New Testament. You're not being cheerful and the Bible commands us. So it's not like a bag of Skittles where you could just pick out the orange and the red and the green. You gotta have all of it. You gotta be all in. Pastor Dante said, you have to be all in. So you have the permission to release the sound. You have permission to give to the storehouse. You have permission to have all your needs and supplies met by the source, not the resource, your job, resource, your friends, resource, all these other places, resources, the source. You have a permission to give to the kingdom so that all your supplies can be met as you are a cheerful giver. So now is the opportunity to be a cheerful giver. Yes. All right. Good. So now uh, here at God Changes Community Church, we have four ways that you can give. Everybody say four ways. Four ways. Like a stop sign. Don't say that. Just listen to me. So way number one is actually from your seat. You'll see these wonderful individuals standing with the buckets right here in every lane. You have it. You have the opportunity to do that with the envelopes. So listen, right now you can get the envelope right now and write your stuff right now and not wait till the envelope and the buckets leave. You can do it right now, right now, right now, all right? The second way is that you can go to connect.godchasers.cc and give that way. We have there's an app inside of there and all of that stuff. It's real high tech. If you're a millennial, boom, you got it. You already know, you're probably already there. Good stuff, outstanding. And then you can also text to give at 84 Three, two, one. Once again, you can text to the number 84321. Any amount, you can text to 84321. That's another way that you can give. Whether you have Verizon, Sprint, AT&T, or T-Mobile, you can text to 84321 and bless the Lord with your tithes and offering. And lastly, we also have a Connect Desk out there. You can give at the Connect Desk. Yes, you can just swipe your shit right there. And you could just have it all the shook it, right? You could do that, Pastor. Shook it, they can do it right there. You could do it right out there. So that's what we're doing. Um, let me tell you guys why I give, right? Really quick. Oh, I don't have time to tell y'all why I give. I give because the Bible tells me to. All right, listen. What we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and pray, and then we're gonna move forward in the service and have announcements. So right now I'm gonna pray. All, our hearts and minds are clear. Let's bow our heads and pray. Eternal Father, we thank you for the opportunity to come to the kingdom to receive, Lord God, the seeds that are planted on good soil and will return, Lord God, to bless us, to keep us, to encourage us as you encamp your angels around us. Bless each person that has the mind to give right now in your son Jesus' name, amen, amen, amen. And you are free to serve man was that an incredible incredible sermon yes yes all right and so now we got some announcements so here is what you need to know good afternoon everybody it's your girl Roxanne first we would like to thank all of our visitors for choosing to worship with us here at God Chases today now stay tuned for this week's news and notes
If you're a new partner and haven't attended an Activate luncheon, we'll be holding one next Sunday, October 6th, right after service. So make sure you join us so you can learn more about how to get involved here at God Chasers. God Chasers Community Church is now a partner of the San Antonio Food Bank. We believe in community and will be available on Saturday, October 12th for food distribution. We've got two opportunities available for you to help serve. On Friday, October 11th for food packaging and Saturday, October 12th for food distribution. You can sign up today at register.godchasers.cc. Harvest Fest is next month on October 31st. We're starting to collect unopened bags of candies, which you can drop off in our baptism pool right out front. We're also in need of volunteers for trunk or treat. So start coming up with creative ideas so you can decorate your trunk. Sign up today at register.godchasers.cc. That's it for this week's news and notes. Make sure to follow God Chasers on our Facebook and Instagram. And you can always find more information on our Connect Hub at connect.godchasers.cc and click on the announcements tab. Yeah. A lot going on, amen? Lots of ways for you to be involved. And I am super excited. Pastor Dante and I are so excited to become partners of the San Antonio Food Bank. Yes, 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 yes. <laughs> this is another way for us to be able to serve our community because we believe in community, amen? So if you want to be a part of that, sign up. It's near and dear to our hearts, and we're super excited about that. We just want to be able to say one more time, thank you to pastors Monica and Lucas for being here today. Thank you for being here with us. Thank you for serving alongside of us. We are so grateful to have you here. Amen. Did y'all enjoy having them here with us today? Amazing, amazing. If it was your first time here at God Chasers, stop by the Connect Test before you leave. Fill out a little visitor's card. It's a tiny bit of information just so that we can stay connected with you and let you continually know about the things going on here at God Chasers. Amen? Amen. There's some fun stuff after church. Listen, we have paletas. Do y'all know what that is? Yes, you do. <laughs> Stop by after church and get you some. It's out in the front. It's table set up and there's aqua frescas as well. Don't, don't leave without being able to enjoy it. Amen? Amen. Amen. Yeah, take a couple seconds. Just stay fellowship with somebody. Tell them you love them. Remind them that they are the one. Amen. They are the one. Amen. Um, listen, I want to say something real quick. If you... Turn the track off, please. Thank you. Everybody stop playing. <laughs> All right, I'm going to back up a little bit. Tiff, just bring this down just a little bit, please. All right. So if, you, if, you, if you're here today and you say, Pastor Dante, I, I think I heard the voice of my pastor today. I believe that, that the word that you spoke today shifted something in me. If that's you today, I want to be your pastor. Okay. I want you to join one of the most amazing church experiences <laughs> that you have an opportunity to join. And so today we're going to ask you to do it. Again, I don't know why the band just stopped completely, but if, everybody's scared now. They're like, oh, I don't know if I could join. Them. <laughs> I don't know. It's, it's, it's too quiet in here. If, if that's you today, I, I, I really do. I want to I wanna be your pastor. If that's you today, I want you to do me a favor. Stand up on your feet. Just take a step of faith. Come down here and take my hand. I believe you're supposed to be a part of this church. I want to be your pastor. I hear the prompting of the Holy Spirit. If that's you, come on, come on. Can you come down here? Come on, come on, come on, come on. Come on, God chasers. Make some noise in him. Come on. Good. Come on, come on. Tell us your name. Azure. Azure. What's your name, man? Antoine. Antoine. Welcome, Azure and Antoine, to the God Chaser family. Y'all do me a favor, follow that young lady right there. She's going to give you some more information about our church. Come on, come on, come on. Tell me your name. Devin. Devin. Crystal. Crystal. Okay, be careful, Crystal. Be careful. Tell me your name. Devin. 
Devin, this Devin Jr. Oh, hey man, boy, that's a good mustache, boy. How old are you, man? This brother's 16. I can't grow a mustache like this right now. I'm 40 years old. No, that's good. <laughs> Look, I want to welcome y'all to God Chasers, man. Thank y'all so much for being a part. Thank y'all so much for connecting. Come on, y'all can follow this young lady right here. Come on, if there's anybody else, we'll wait on you. If there's anybody else, we'll wait on you. Okay, amen. Do me a favor, stand up on your feet. Stand up on your feet, grab somebody by the hand. I want you to pray for that person like you want them to pray for you. Today has been a good day. Did y'all have a good time at church today? Good, 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 good. I want you to pray for that person. Squeeze that hand. I want you to know that you are a priest. So the prayer that you pray today can shift something in their life. The prayer that, the prayer that you pray today can change something in their world. I want you to take 30 seconds and just pray for the hand that you're holding. Come on. Three, two, one, pray. Come on. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we thank you, God. We give you glory and honor. Lord, I thank you for every hand being held today, Lord Jesus. Lord, every hand being held is a representation of the priesthood. I feel like you're doing something. You're shifting something. You're changing something in the atmosphere God now Lord take us home Lord Jesus but never take us away from your presence Lord and we love you until we meet again we give you glory honor in Jesus name amen and amen and amen I need you to get five hugs on your way out I need you to get five hugs on your way out come on come on